Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1 and this video I present this my own little nuclear engine and that is because I am tired of not those no 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 go back all the copies of the stock Nerva that we seem to have in Realism Overall see there they are uh, this one that one they're all the same model of Nerva with the silly little radiation thing and they're all misscaled for some reason because uh, they didn't do the configurations properly I guess I don't know what happened with these they all have uh, yeah the scaling is wrong I don't know what to do about that but yeah we've got all these but the only one that seems to work right is this Nerva 2 which is really ridiculous <laughs> um, but at least it's uh, got good thrust on a certain mass that's nice uh, but yeah, th this is all sad. Of course, there is the KSB Interstellar engines, which are better, but um, I decided to make my own. And this was partly inspired by a website that was linked on Twitter, possibly by uh, Beyond Nerva, maybe, or one of the people who normally focus on these high energy things. And that was this website by BWX Technologies and they had this uh, image of a nuclear thermal propulsion system and I went well that looks better <laughs> so there's this uh, bimodal propulsion capacity uh, and it's particle bed fuel so I've named this a particle bed reactor system and I think that's distinct from this uh, icy moons orbiter because there's a nuclear reactor for an ion propulsion system, so that's different. Well, it could be the same reactor, but anyway, uh, so you can see the model here and you can compare to what I've got here in Kerbal right now. And it's just basically the same idea, except I didn't put the BWXT on it. And uh, actually it'll be clearer if I pull this down. You can see I've got the in inlet pipes and all that business uh, some structure that might irritate some people uh, but honestly that gives you a good guide uh, as to how much diameter your tank should have if you put this on a tank that's less diameter than that it's probably too small because remember it has to be all hydrogen and yeah this runs on hydrogen so it's just like a normal Nerva I, in fact I give it the standard 60 ignitions now to get the numbers for this though I did a little bit more quote-unquote research on particle bed uh, reactor systems, but not much research. I went as far as Wiki. Uh, so we have we have Project Timberwind here, and so I've named uh, the smaller version of this engine Timberwind 45 after this one, and the one that you see on the Cassay rocket right now is the Timberwind 75. And the problem is the numbers here actually are just nonsense. I'll, and there's a good time to discuss how you can tell that numbers are nonsense. First of all, uh, you'll note that the diameter of the smaller one with less thrust is larger than the diameter of the larger one with more thrust. So probably those are reversed. But beyond that, um, this thrust is less than double that thrust, but the diameter is double. And next step up, this is an 8 meter diameter, but this provides more than three times the thrust of this one, so probably the diameters are just all wrong. <laughs> They're just all wrong. Um, the specific impulse was probably a goal, 1,000 seconds. Uh, they talk about uh, improving specific impulse from 930, that's for Nerva, uh, to 1,000 seconds, but citation needed um, and now the the masses the masses don't make a whole lot of sense if we take a top one here we've got uh, 8.3 tons but the diameter of the engine is 8.7 meters now 8.3 tons will be about the same size as an F1 engine but the F1 engine is only four meters and it's not a nuclear reactor so the idea that you're going to get a nuclear reactor engine that's 8.7 meters and have it be the same mass as the F1 engine seems a bit ridiculous and what's happening here is they're going through and they just assumed that they would get a thrust weight ratio of 30 and worked from there 
and that is not how you should do things. Uh, a little bit suspicious since Nerva only managed about a thrust weight ratio of between 3 and 6, depending on which version you're going with. So, mm, not good numbers for that. But uh, So I'm, I'm trying to figure out how to get good numbers for this sort of system, this particle bed kind of system. But this isn't offering me much hope, is it? Well, actually at the top here, there is a tantalizing quote. It says, whereas Nerva engine was projected to weigh about 6.8 tons. Now in game, it's more like 10, but I guess maybe a flight article rather than the ones that they were testing on the ground would have been uh, 6.8 tons. Let's just uh, set that aside for now. The final SNTP, which is Space Nuclear Thermal Propulsion, uh, offered just over one third the thrust from an engine of only 1.65 tons. That sounds a little bit better um, when you think about that so if we multiply the thrust by three uh, which would match Nerva uh, we would get an engine of 4. Point, uh, 4.65 tons we oh, not 4.65 sorry um, 4.95 my math honestly anyway at 4.95 tons there we go yes 4.95 tons uh, so it'll still be lighter than Nerva, but it's in the ballpark, right? Uh, it uh, will provide the same thrust, 4.95 tons, and that would give it a thrust weight ratio of more like 9, not 30. And then the numbers make a whole lot more sense. So the reason why it's called Timbuwind 45, of course, is that this is 45 tons of thrust exactly. Um, so this, this looks like a super accurate thrust number. It isn't. It is simply a matter of taking 45, multiplying by 9.81, and that's how you get that number. And this 75 times 9.81 is that number. So, well, it's G, the acceleration due to gravity. So it's, it's a 75 ton thrust engine, 45 thr a ton thrust engine, and a 250 ton thrust engine. So that's what we are looking at here. All right, so based on that, we go back to the game. I've got this, uh, this is the Timberwind 75. Read somewhere else that it's supposed to be two words, timber and wind. And uh, so if we take a look at the engine stats here, this one is the 75, so it's 8.25 tons. And that'll give it a little bit less than a thrust to weight ratio of nine. And uh, it's I'm still keeping it with the 75 tons of thrust. I decided to give it a 980 vacuum ISP, not 1000 and the 60 ignitions they put on Nerva for some strange reason. So there's this variant, and then there's also a smaller Timberwind 45. I may produce the Timberwind 250 eventually. That might be going on the Monument Launcher as an upper stage. So there's the 45, and it is the 4.95 tons. So we've got all that, otherwise everything else is the same. Sort of assuming that the thrust to weight ratio is constant, but they seem to assume that as well. But this fits on a 5.4 meter stage, which would be the same as the Vulcan stages. So it'll fit on a Vulcan stage, or it would fit on a New Glenn stage. This Casse rocket is 8.4 meters, so this is designed to fit on an SLS stage, or something the size of an S2 or Saturn. So yeah, they are convenient. You would need a much larger stage to justify using the Timberwind 250 uh, because this is all hydrogen, but remember hydrogen is very light. You need a very large tank in order to contain enough hydrogen. Now we're going to test it out because I haven't launched it yet. That is the goal of this video. I'm just introducing it. I'll link the parts in the video description. They should work in stock. They well, not both of them. Uh, there'll only be one appearing in stock, and it'll have double the stats of the Nerva, Adenerve, and it'll be fitting 2.5 meter stages. Normal Hydrolox stage here. I was going like, where's the methane? Okay, uh, Hydrolox, Hydrolox, Hydrolox all the way. And it's my E6 engines, which are sort of like better RS68s, if you'd like. Okay, let's see if it works. Oh, 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 that's not good. Um, maybe we shouldn't use this launch pad. <laughs> we have, uh, 
Yeah. Okay. Maybe Pat 39B. I mean, it's supposed to be for SLS things, right? I don't know. Okay. Okay, it's a pretty bright, shiny day today out here. Really makes the rocket look good. Oh, no SAS. Um, I'll have to change that on the on the upper stages. They should have an SAS module, but that doesn't matter too much. We can use Smart ASS for that then. All right, ignition. And launch. Also, the flames on these engines are really, really tiny. So, uh, off the launch pad, this rocket is still less massive than a Falcon Heavy. But its capabilities are greater. Would benefit from boosters. In the Mars Colonization series, it had Sagita boosters. Methane and oxygen. We could slap on the recoverable Raptor pods. Which would also be methane and oxygen. Incidentally, I put the worm logo on rockets before NASA did, just saying. Okay. Getting to the end of this stage. And separation. And ignition. Ooh. This has a really huge nozzle. It's just one of those engines at the bottom with a really big nozzle for vacuum purposes. I'll just knock off the fairings. It's just a dummy payload right now. And that dummy payload is 45 tons. So the goal here is for the Timberwind stage to send this over to the moon, but also then bring itself back into low Earth orbit. So then it can be reused. It's got a docking port on top. So it can be refueled and then it'll do it again. It'll send another payload to the moon and come back. The 45 tons roughly matches the payload capacity of the Saturn V. So, and we've got a rocket that's half the mass. But we will have to see whether it's capable of that. The trick is there's not just a delta V to push it to the moon, right? Uh, does it reserve enough to bring itself back down is the question. I think it does. It might even have more payload capacity, but it also does have to finish orbit here. This stage will not finish orbit on its own. Okay, separation. And ignition. Had a little bit of recoil there though. Takes a while, just like the Nervas do, it takes a while to get up to full thrust. So again, this sized tank gives it a burn time of 10 minutes and this is the basically the diameter that the frame is made for so you could get more burn time in making a longer tank but really using this engine on any sort of thinner tank a smaller diameter would probably be a waste it should produce electric charge automatically we don't see any electric charge draw, though I should probably put something that will use a lot of electric charge just to test that out. But I won't do that this time. The stage RCS uses hydrogen gas, which is either produced by um, this function here, or otherwise just from boil off. Okay, so we see we only have 4,295 right now, and we're going to use 3,000 to boost it up. Is the remaining 1,000 without that payload enough to bring this back to low orbit? That's the question. Okay, well, roughly speaking, that'll be good enough. Uh, actually, that's a little bit high. Right there. We'll go with that. Okay, well, we might as well ignite now. Well, it's all confused about the burn time now, but I think uh, we ignited close enough to when we wanted to. Okay, that should be good enough. Uh, yeah, it's got, uh, well, embarrassed encounter and all, but uh, if we had the timing right, it would be better off. So let's just see. Let me decouple from the common birthing mechanism. Obviously, we'll need to 
have something dock with this to refuel it. Ah, uh, just just shy here. 2,901. That wasn't too far off in my estimates. Let's see, so we've lost some delta V. Let me just start cooling the hydrogen gas using the power from the reactor. It seems like it overdoes it. Even though I thought I did the math right, it seems like it overdoes it. It's supposed to be 100 units of hydrogen gas to one unit of liquid and hydrogen. And that's what it's doing right there. But So I don't know how we get extra delta V. I'll have to fix that stage. That stage is not going to be in the package that I put into the video description because I still have to figure out what's going on with that. But the engine will be. So if you wanted an alternate nuclear engine to use, hopefully it'll be of some interest. Oh, uh, we ended up with a really high periapsis. That's not good. No, we happen to be pointing in a fairly decent direction. Okay, fuel seems settled. Okay, that's better. So really, we only need about 300 meters per second more and then we'd have enough to do the full mission, send something out to the moon, and capture back into orbit. Now obviously if we were flinging something out to Mars, then we would have to slow down right away, not wait until we come back around the periapsis again. We'd have to at least do some of the slowing down right away, and that's a little bit inefficient, but that's how it is. Okay, well I've sort of left it derelict here, but we got to 1,919, what, well, 1,000, sorry, 1,620 kilometers by 227. And, yep, we could get some fuel back by cooling down that hydrogen gas there. Nice thing about having reactors, you definitely have enough power to do the cooling. Uh, you definitely want the reactor nice and far away from the from the fuel though so it doesn't heat anything up it's all very complicated but anyway so that is the Timberwind 75 and of course there's the Timberwind 45 if there are other stats for the engines obviously I'm working off of like the worst sources so maybe I should look at what stats KSB Interstellar gives Timberwinds I think there is a Timberwind in KSB Interstellar it but it's got the whole upgrade uh, situation and it's KSB Interstellar is way complicated I could probably take a year to try and figure out KSB Interstellar anyway so with that I'll say thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please do press like if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below and I'll see you next time